Hello everyone on YouTube and Tumblr. I am the Dopasaurus Rare. Um, and yes, I am wearing a Proto Man hat because I just stepped out of the shower and my hair is wet and I don't really feel like showing it off. <clears throat> uh, but that's besides the point. Um, I am making this video because I feel like there are a few things about my main character that I kind of wanted to go over with. Um, I might make videos for the other characters too. Because there are some things that uh, the bios that I wrote don't really go over. That some of them I feel like th th there's things that need to kind of be, you know, discussed. Um, so, for the main thing is the universe that my characters all kind of live in. Um, like, it's kind of like a you know, an open field kind of place. And then, you know, all the species have territories. Uh, it's kind of like a compass and the humans are that like centerpiece where all the arrows point out in the different directions That's where all the humans live, but their territory is all bordered off by um, Like this giant Chinese wall kind of thing if you've ever watched attack on Titan um, You'll understand where I'm going at with that um, and the whole like timeline of it's like modern but then some cultures kind of went back and stuff, if that makes any sense. Mm. Um, I do not know how to describe things. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so the humans all live in this closed-in region, pretty much. Um, and that's kind of where the story first starts. Um, now, a lot of you were probably pronouncing my main character's name Ryoko um but actually it's pronounced Ryoko like rye bread um and no I did not get that name from that one anime that I have never seen and I think it's about space pirates or something ah, the only space pirates I know are from Metroid so um yeah um and the reason I actually made that name it was for like some AU that I was doing with a few of my friends who I am no longer friends with because reasons and I'm not going over that because this is not what this video is about <clears throat> uh, but yeah her name is pronounced Ryoko Orinichi and um, yes the last name was inspired by uh, a character from that movie Kill Bill if you've seen the movie you'll know which character I am talking about and she was a badass um anyway uh Ryoko, uh, kind of, she's, she's about, like, in my opinion, she's, like, average height. She's actually taller than me by, like, two inches. She's, like, 7'5". Um, and she's, she's kind of slender, slightly muscular built because, you know, she fights and stuff like that. So, yeah. Mm. Not, like, overdoing it, but, like, you can actually see that she has arms and stuff. And she's not really a... Uh, chesty at all she has really tiny boobs um and she has no butt and no hips so it's like how are babies gonna come from this you, you don't have them you are skinny <laughs> you, you <laughs> you're skinny <laughs> and she's like fuck that i don't care um however her body is littered in scars um the biggest one being across her stomach at a diagonal because of a situation that I will explain later. And then, you know, uh, she has a couple here and there, and then she has a big one across her shoulder right there. Um, hence why she's kind of afraid of sharp objects, because that's kind of what happens. She's like, oh, God, no. <laughs> um... As for her past, um, Ryoko used to live in a small town called Niedertown, um, with her mom and her dad and her two older brothers, who, um, she was nowhere near them in age, like, when she was six years old, um, her youngest brother was, like, 12, and her oldest brother was, like, 18. And another thing was, is she didn't really look anything like that family. And I will not explain why, because that is an epic spoiler alert. Um, 
However, she does not remember anything past the age of six. Like, it's a complete blank to her, and it's another reason I will not explain. Um, but, uh, when she was about 12, um, her parents finally got a divorce because, uh, she started noticing things when she was about, like, 10 years old, and she felt like it was kind of her fault because Ryoko, from an early age, was a troubled kid, uh, she didn't have friends, and she always got into fights despite being a girl, and, you know, she kind of knew she didn't really belong anywhere. Um, and her, her dad was never home. He was always away at business. Um, and, you know, her mom was technically forced to stay home to take care of the kids. And she wasn't, you know, she was very, very strict, like, overprotective strict and it really bothered Ryoko. Though Ryoko always summed it up as, you know, her mom was just trying to provide for her and didn't want her getting hurt, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> However, then, you know, her parents get a divorce, and then her and her mother move away to Hotep Town. Um, and then that's where she meets Kelby, and then stuff starts to kind of go down. Because, uh, Kelby's house was kind of possessed by this demon named Smiley. Literally. Um, however, they didn't know what the the guy the guy's name was. It was just like, there was like some strange entity in my house, and I kind of went to investigate it, and Ryoko's was like, oh, hey, look, I found a Ouija board, and Kobe's like, um, yeah, I don't know if we should use that. We might make him angry, and Ryoko's like, Pfft, whatever. And she used to be kind of, like, practical back then, so she didn't really believe in the supernatural, but then that quickly changed when... You know, Kobe arrives at her house in the middle of the night, covered in her his parents' blood, and he's like, oh my god, we have to leave, we pissed it off. Ah! And she's like, oh. Okay, let's go. So then they leave, and then, like, a couple years later, um, they get captured by these crazed humans. Some mad scientist people, and you know, the experiments started to happen and whatnot, and well, then that's how Kobe becomes this monstrous panther thing, and Ryoko is then a werewolf, and then they abscond together, and yeah. And so then, since they both believe that they're no longer human, they decide to leave human territory, which then they realized they went into the wrong direction and went straight into demon territory and then got their asses kicked and Ryoko almost dies and Kobe gets kidnapped. Lovely. However, Ryoko is rescued by a doctor named Kane and that is his name. That's all you really get to know about him because he's kind of a side character. Um, however, quick spoiler, he's a serial killer like Dexter, if you've ever seen that show, not Dexter's Laboratory, the actual, show, the actual show about this guy who was this cop and blah 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 blah. Go look it up. <laughs> um, but yeah, then, you know, being in a hospital and not liking sharp objects, she's like, ah, no, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Screw you and okay, thanks, even though I'm a werewolf, so my wounds heal. Um, so then pretty much throughout her entire story is just about getting her best friend back. And then she meets the other characters along the way. Um, jumping back to the werewolf speak. Um, yes, Ryoko still turns into a werewolf in the full moon. She has no control of that. However, being chemically made though, she can sporadically turn into a werewolf if she's under too much stress. Pressure, anger, blah, blah, blah. She'll just like, ah! However, she still has a consciousness when she's in that form, so she has an itty bitty kind of control there, so, you know, if that makes any sense. I hope it does. <laughs> As for how she kind of feels when she meets the other OCs, um, 
The first one she meets actually shows up again much later. Um, first one she meets is actually Lyra. And Lyra is the angel that gets captured by the same humans that turned Kobe and Ryoko into creatures of horrible. Um, however, she did not know she was going to meet this girl again. Um, however, her opinion about Lyra is... <laughs> How can I hate this? You're adorable. Holy crap. How are you so optimistic? I feel like you're up to your opposite and being pessimistic and oh, uh, you're so adorable. Oh my god. And you dress and uh, stop being so fucking cute. I can't. I can't handle cute girls. I can't. I cannot. I cannot. And this is why Ryoko kind of reminds me of a boy. It's just why I'm, I am like 100% convinced she is transgender. So there you go. That's canon. She's transgender. Well, that, that doesn't stop her from wearing girl clothes from time to time, but shh. You didn't hear that from me. Um, you know, her opinion about Kobe. Kobe's her best friend. She loves him. Very platonically, oh my god. Um, and then the next one she meets is uh, Jack, which a lot of you, I am very surprised, you all friggin' adore him. And I'm like, good, because so do I. Even though he can be a jackass sometimes, because how he meets Ryoko is, is he hears Ryoko bitching and whining about, you know, you know, being depressed about being a werewolf, and he literally comes up and bitch slaps her and was like, Bitch, stop your complaining. No one gives a damn. Stop crying your eyes out. Learn to deal with it. Okay, we're friends now. And she's like, What? What? I. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> okay. And then through Jack, that's how she kind of meets uh, a few more other demons. Because. He's like a high rank or demon hater or something like that, whatever. And then she meets uh, Nico. And um, OTP feels. <coughs> um, yeah. Ryuk was like, Nico is so damn cute. I cannot. Ah. I like her. But then I become this shy fucking idiot and cannot express my feelings to her and Nico is the exact same way. So it's like, oh they went to do cute things, ah, but then they're both retarded and don't confess their feelings. On them both. <laughs> like, I love you too, but then you make me mad. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then... I don't know what else to really talk about now, other than uh, Ryoko does have one really bad trait. Ryoko has this uh, tendency to, um, if a situation starts to get a little, um, she, like, if someone else is in danger and they're, Ryoko kind of knows them really well, or actually she doesn't even have to know them at all. And she takes pity on this person. Ryoko has this tendency to, um, if she knows this other person won't, like, oh, fuck. How do we explain it? Um, to cut, to cut a long, stupid explanation that I cannot even fucking say, short, Ryoko has this tendency of being self-sacrificing. Like, no, don't hurt them. Take me instead. Mm, Ryoko, no. Because there's a, generally a 90% chance that's what that horrible person wants you to do. But then you fucking do it because you're a retard. I love you, Ayako. But sometimes. Sometimes. Oh my god. So, yeah. That's pretty much all the th major things that I really wanted to discuss about her. Again, I might make other videos like this about the other five, and then I might even do ones about the bad guy characters. Um, however, if you guys have any questions that I didn't go over, please hit that ask box. I would greatly appreciate it. Y'all are awesome. Much loves from the dub sauce. Kebab!